Welcome back. We'll take off with a gentleman from Latvia. It's a pleasure for me to uh, to have him here. I still recall the first time we met. It was at a at a workshop in Prague called Exoriente for film projects from Eastern and Central Europe. And Gintz brought a project that he was producing and directing. And I didn't understand a word of what it was about. And we spent a full week together talking a lot about it. And at the end of the at the end of the week, I sort of got it. So that was uh, that was great. Gintz is here um, partly as an independent filmmaker, working both as a director and also running his own company in Latvia, Mistrus Media. But also because he has taken part in attempts, discussions, to change the structure of Latvian television, both in terms of the internal structure of the television, but also in terms of opening it towards the independent, the independent environment. And of course, both um, elements are extremely important. And I'm sure that it's not only Latvian television, but it's a, a lot of, of um, previous communist countries that could uh, benefit from the discussion that is going on in Latvia. So again, Skobe, please, the floor is yours. Здравствуйте, я буду следовать моему эстонскому коллегу и пробовать говорить по-русски. I'm going to speak Russian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I make some mistakes. When I was invited to come here to St. Petersburg and to talk about the revolution that we started in the Latvian television, I said yes, not thinking really. I haven't thought about the historical context because you cannot speak about revolution in St. Petersburg because it has really a subtext, historical subtext. So talking about revolution can be actually ambivalent. But I can assure you that I do not belong to the red people from Latvia. And also I can assure you that our revolution is at the very beginning, is making very first steps. So speaking about transmedia and new media platforms, nobody knows which direction it develops actually. So please be assured, don't worry. Last year, we started to build new media, new media platform in Latvia. We could understand that the viewers, the spectators, use the mass media in a new way. The reason, the meaning of such revolution was very common, actually. The Latvian television and radio were working separately, and they continue working separately, not together. So we had to build a media capable of working in three different platforms at the same time. The problem was that the Latvian television lost a lot of its spectators. The medium number was 65 and plus meeting age group, 65 years old and more. We watched the television in Latvia, so we thought that maybe there is no youth participating, actually. So it became very apparent to us that the most important thing is the content. So the question was, 
Who's going to do that content? Who's going to create the content? We looked at the experience of Estonians, and it's actually typical for us people in Latvia to look what Estonians do, and Estonians were learning from the Finnish people. The Finnish people were learning. We also learned from Great Britain and from Sweden. And the Swedish people told us, you know, you're thinking about something, we're going to think about the same thing in five years, so be after us. And then we also tried to learn from the experience in Germany, and as a great French poet Charak was saying that there's nothing better that um, feeding from that eating from the others, and so even the great meat contents of um, refurnished meat from somebody else. So what I'm saying is that you cannot really build your own television without um, taking somebody else's experience. So we have to use the resources that already exist. So we have to take from other people and to learn from them. Talking about human resources that we have in the radio and on television, only 20% of people working on radio and television were interested in radical changes to take. Only 20% were ready to work in the so-called multimedia direction. So, learning from the experience of Estonians and from Finnish people, we came to five most important decisions concerning the content. The content that could be useful uh, for Lithuanian television and radio, that is, first of all, current affairs, then culture, education, and science and content for children and youth. All that made it clear to us that besides the news, we can watch um, works of independent producers. I don't know how it happens in Russia, but in the majority of studios that work as independent producers, they're capable of working in different formats, such as television and radio. So compared to the old media, traditional media, such as Latvian television and radio, they're capable of changing very fast, and they can find different formats how to find their audience. It was very clear that in the nearest five years we have to make more competition between those who work in in-house and independent producers so that we can get so that we can get more content and we can get better content content that the Latvian television and radio produce. So besides the news, there are four more contents that I mentioned earlier. Another way, as we actually started working, is that we can cease working, and that will be used for the next five years by the Latvian television, is to find, is to buy montage and scripts and PR technologies from the current independent producers that we are still lacking or where we have and the demand for which we do have in the Latvian television. So we could buy all those um, important things from the uh, 
from the uh, independent producers. Here I also see a problem. Sometimes the uh, filmmakers are like snobs when they discuss television. So the filmmakers saying, I'm sorry, we're making art, and then television is making something else. Nevertheless, I do have examples of projects that are working, that are existing, and they do have tremendous potential. This year we started a new project in order to find the state money. We called it the 100th anniversary of Latvia. So we asked the producers to make eight films that would cover today's situation and the problems in Latvia, the current affairs. If before the 1990s we had so-called film chronicles during the 1990s, nothing new really emerged. So now there is a niche that was used only by people who produce the, the news on television. I can give you a small example. In our studios, we faced that problem the following way. Two years ago, there was a young director who started making a movie about his father. His father was a banker, one of the first millionaires in Latvia in the 1990s, and then he disappeared. Two years ago, Interpol found him in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, in the psychiatry clinic. So his daughter started making a film. We started looking for archives for the materials that would characterize those times. We couldn't find anything because it turned out that in those times nobody, nobody was um, uh, fixing that time, nobody was documenting that time film-wise. So, of course, they had some television material, but there was nothing, no material, no artistic material, no material that a director would have created about those crazy 1990s. So there is no cinematographic material, unfortunately. There are many reasons for such a situation. One of those reasons is perhaps we thought always it would be very interesting to live, so tomorrow would be even more interesting than yesterday. But what turned out to be is Latvia became more boring as a country. But yet we have a demand in that subjective, in that artistic view on what's happening. If we think about the uh, poetic documentary school from Riga, if we want to create the same atmosphere that it was there in 1960, but it's this magic atmosphere was not only in Latvia, like for example, yesterday there was a screening of film by Gers Frank here in this festival then we can find that atmosphere in that particular cinema. Even though that thematics, that narrative that you can see in the films, it's more or less the Soviet propaganda. But if you look at the style, how the cameramen worked, how the editors worked, how the director worked, we can feel that special subtext in the movie. So that is, that's what our demand is, that's what we're asking the independent producers to create, is that independent mentality, independent point of view that, that we saw in the movies in those times, so that we can document that reality. If somebody, say, 20 or 30 or 40 years from now, will want to reconstruct, to learn about, to find that reality that we live in today, they would turn to our cinematic archives and would find that reality. 
So that's the contact we must have. But I think this should be requested um, by our side, by the television side, because the cinematographic people should not think of it on their own. It should be demanded, requested by us. So this is what I called current affairs in the uh, documentary. We worked on the program for the next five years, and we were thinking how each year we could more and more use those resources from the independent producers so we could create very strong and um, very strong potential out of these creative industries in the documentary sphere because in, in their content or in the way of thinking they are much, um, they're much stronger and much more courageous than those who just work in the television and the radio today. I have some examples of how in the framework of this uh, new stream, there are film studios, there are some film studios that make several serious the road movie um, in the touristic places where they open Latvia from the very beginning from scratch and our experience shows that these projects are quite successful and they react to the demands of the audience and they can market in the right way this content so they were making the episodes in those travel documents documentaries. They were creating pages on Facebook. They were taking those marketing or cross media activity steps. So if the television worked in that direction, it was very difficult for the television because it takes time to come to a decision. It takes a few meetings. People have to think it over. And the independent producers react very quickly. And these days are critical for sales or for finding the audience. Another example that I have for you today, and that's what we're going to do next year in Latvia. We will make a new radio station for the young people. There will be a new audiovisual radio station that will be adjacent to the uh, Latvian national radio. But the people working there would be young people who worked in the other radio stations. And the goal is to make it a visual radio. It didn't happen before. We don't have that in Latvia up till now. But we have to give the young cinema makers a chance. Because today virtually everybody can do a movie maker even without an education. And we want to give young people a chance to show we want to give them a chance and to see whether it's possible for the radio to be visual. And we want to give a chance for experiment. We want to give this chance to the young generation, the young generation who would make the so-called mass media in the future. Our re what's the result of our reform? The political leaders were kind of afraid of us. They were not afraid of of the content. Next year, they will give the money that we need, the money for content. But for um, the content between uh, television and radio, to adjacent, to making television and radio adjacent, they're still not giving us the money because they're not trusting that television and radio can be together. 
as a new media platform. So we're going to work harder to show them the political leaders that our way is correct, that we're right. Thank you very much, Kims. Are there any? Yeah. I'll just give you the mic. Maybe I missed something. What is the television channel that you are? Yes, I work in the group that is responsible for that reform in the national television of Latvia. Can I ask a direct question? So is your television interested in the content from Russia, for example, or documentaries from Russia? Because we have a tradition of documentary films that is very strong tradition, documentaries on television. Our audience is used to the documentary films, for example, one of the most important uh, content moments is historical documentary film. According to the research, in Latvia people really like to watch the films that are dealing with history. And we're showing quite often, actually, the documentary films on our second channel, the national channel of Latvian television, and that would be films from Russia and from many other countries. So, Then what's the mechanism? How can independent producer give his or her film? So maybe you can buy that film. That's very classic scheme. But in that context, we're working so that the television would be ordering ordering the films from producers. But where we can actually cooperate is the co-production on a particular topic. We have a list of topics, so I'm sure we'll have a lot of opportunities to work together with the Russian documentary filmmakers. Because, you know, our history is connected closely together of our two countries, so there are a lot of topics that we'll be happy to work together. Thank you very much. We have to close that for now, Gims, uh, and move on to the, the third Baltic country today. Yes, we are.